Hi, and welcome to the first of a series that I've created to help give voice to survivors of narcissistic abuse, as well as offer information to help create understanding around the topics the survivors bring up. I'm one of Queen Being's life coaches. My name is Lise Colucci, and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. Today, I talked with Sarah about having a narcissistic mother and how to recover and heal from that. If you like what you see in this program, hit subscribe and let's go. Um, how you doing, Sarah? Fine, thank you. Good. Um, so what question did you have today? I am um, at a point where I'm trying to heal. Mm -hmm. I moved past this big shadow narcissism over my life. The thing is, I would, I would never diminish or demean anybody who's gone through a narcissistic experience. They are all different, but they all change you. But I think some people who come from healthy backgrounds, who were raised in healthy families, have a little bit more of a blueprint to go back to, to figure out who they are, even with the change because of the narcissism. They can pick up their dreams or make new ones. It's just, I just think that children who were raised with narcissistic parents have a harder time figuring out who they really are because they were never allowed to discover what they wanted to do or what their dreams were, or it was everything that the parent wanted. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm kind of floundering and I've been doing all the exercises and it's good because I know what I'm not, you know, the exercises that say, your parent said this, but this is the truth and you know, those kind of things. And they've helped me know I'm not crazy. I'm not lazy and, and everything that I've been accused of in my life. But I haven't been able to find out who I am, what I, you know, so I'm just, I'm wondering if there's something out there that could help there's precipitate a lot. that. There's a lot More out there. More than just go for a walk, you know, I, going right. for a walk is great. Don't get me wrong. I love doing that. But it's more than do I like to swim? It's, it's, it's the core. It's who, who, who am I, you know, without this big shadow of narcissism over my head. Right. Right. It's transcendent and yeah. getting beat. So, so you're saying your, your past is not the happy somewhere to go back to past. Correct. No, I, I don't even know. Like I said there, I have brief moments that I can see a smile here or, th or have a happy memory here. But for the most part, it is, well, let me give you a great example. I tried out for both softball and cheerleading, made the teams, but I never got to find out if I really liked them because my narcissistic parent decided that was not what I needed to do mm -hmm. and would not encourage me or support me. And she instead wanted to do this athletic, uh, not athletic, uh, academic, you know, I was a straight A student. So so you, you're, you're used to your, or you're programmed or you're, were taught that your, um, your wants and your wishes don't matter. And, and in fact, they're not the thing to do. You should be doing something else instead. Yes. You're, you're invalidated and you are um, railroaded into doing somebody else's wishes for what's best for your own life. Yes. Okay. So Yes, there. Yes, is the answer. There are ways to get past it, and 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 it's not take. It's not, taking a walk is great, and pampering yourself is great, and it's a piece of it. But there's a lot of there's a lot of the harder work, healing beyond the abuse, and healing way back all the way to like early childhood programming. That you know the reparenting yourself. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah. Do. And what does that mean? right? What does that mean to you? And um, how does one do it? And there's different ways to approach that. One thing is you can, you know, you hear the voices saying, you're not a cheerleader, you're a mathematician, you should be doing your math. Same voice echoing from before telling you, you can't like what you like, you need to like what I like, or you need to like what I tell you to like. And so if that's what's parenting you, if that's what's governing you, and in your decision making, you can interrupt it and interrupt it, write it down, really get to know it, examine it like all the way around and get to get to know these pieces of yourself that aren't really you. They're, they're implanted into you through, you know, 
narcissistic parenting. Um, and then as you get to know them, you get to make a choice. Is that what I want? Is that real? Is that me talking? You know, you start to look at it a little differently because you create separation from it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, that makes, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because... It, so let me ask you then, okay. when we set up the time, you have no clue how hard and difficult it was for me to give you a specific time. I so badly wanted to have you give me a time and go, okay, that's fine. Is that what you're talking about? What happens with narcissism, one big piece is they rob us of our sense of agency. So our ability to act upon our own will is diminished. It's not diminished, it feels diminished. It's there, it's inside of you, it's just not being used because they do it all for you and they take such control of your life and they take such control of your actions and your thinking and your, you know, they, if anyone who's been there knows this feeling of, I don't even know what to eat for dinner. Or I don't, I don't know what I like. I don't know what to do, you know, because it's been kind of taken from us. So yes, things like that, where you can't make a decision on a, on a time when you'd rather have the other person do it for you is exactly the time to say, oh, oh, I had a hard time making a decision about time. Okay, write that down. That's interesting. Oh, look, I do it here too. Okay, that's interesting. But without judging yourself, you know, because okay. the harm on yourself is just, and if you are judging yourself, who's judging you? Is that the narcissist again? You know, and it's- That's the hard part. <laughs> it's true. And honestly, it's the narcissist again, because we don't, it's or it's it's the protective part of ourself that kept us safe with a with a parent that's a narcissist to judge yourself is to say i'll take the blame to take the blame means i'm safe from mommy's wrath does that make yeah. sense yeah. yeah so it's, it's survival it's smart but it's not effective for your life in in allowing you to have your own will and to act upon your will yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. And so, you know, it's playing with that and, and getting, I think this is the part I have to, I'm going to say this, even though it's going to sound crazy. This is the part where it gets fun. And it's not like, yay, fun. It's like, oh, that was really hard, but it was fun because now look, now look where I am, you know, and it, yeah. you get there and it's, it's very, it's incremental. But every time you, every time you make efforts in this direction, you start building a foundation underneath you that when you get knocked down, there you are on top of this foundation instead of being flat again. You know, because these things knock us down when we see them in ourselves. It makes you feel kind of defeated or it makes you, you know, it brings on a lot of negativity within you or within a person. Yeah. When you start seeing it and it's painful. And so, but those feelings, feeling are like, so if you go back to the childhood stuff, those feelings that you're feeling are the inner child work, right? So you can say, yeah, that really hurt when that happened. I can see that. You know, you can talk to the part of you that hurts and say, oh, that was really painful. What would you do to soothe and comfort somebody else if they were feeling that? And you turn that onto yourself. So it's, you see, there's just so many ways and such a process to, to sort of start building Mm -hmm. yeah it, it's it's and I have tried I don't know if I just when you said not judging it, it's hard because sometimes when you just see so much hurt and pain it's and then you know I mean like right now there's a familial battle going on with my narc and her flying monkeys and it's wearisome because you start to question yourself again you know you're right mm -hmm. and that you, know, you you may even have proof but it's just okay if so many people are there maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe maybe it's me maybe you know and and it's that is something I have dealt with and she has she has actually blamed this on me um 
as a child. And she says, and I told her, I said, this is before I even knew about NPD and everything. And I told her, I said, mom, I said, I was five. I knew nothing about being a perfectionist. I knew nothing about this. All I knew was mommy had to be happy. And she says, well, that was nothing I did. That was something you did. That's your personality. Right. Because she's a narcissist. And, and Okay. But do you see right there, it's right there in that, in that, what you just said, the part, there's a third piece and that is the judgment and the, the acceptance of the blame that the child, as an adult, you can say that is ridiculous. I was five. Right. But as a child, who was experiencing it, even if she didn't use those words with you, that the attitude was there, that it's the child, it's your fault, it's, you know, you're the one doing this, you, um, that the third thing, which is the judging and the blame that we, that you accept is the survival. Because without accepting judgment or blame, you would have gotten into an altercation with her of some yeah. sort, right? You would have been. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, mommy's right. Like you said, mommy has to be happy. And in order to make, because you're an empath, you know, in order to make mommy happy, you took, the, you took it on. That's what yeah. it sounds like, right? And, and so you don't have to take it on anymore. You, you didn't have to, you had to take it on then because it was survival. You didn't have to, but you the way your personality works and the way you coped was to take it on. It was a coping skill and it was a it's a huge strength to be able to bear somebody else's negativity, but it isn't very good for you. It's sort of, um, no, it's not. And I learned that lesson very hard this last year, which is one of the reasons I'm like, okay, it's time to just start focusing on healing and moving past. Um, yeah, it can get overwhelming. If you look at it as a big picture, it's less overwhelming in my opinion. If you okay. look at it, try to look at every single detail one at a time, it gets really Which I, I do because, and I, I do think some of it is because I had all this time, I've had to look at the details. I've had to make sure nothing was right. overlooked in this. So I think that it's hard for me to shift my vision from details yeah. to the big. It's like staring at a screen all day and then looking outside and then, you know, Ah, oh, you get, you know, that feeling of relief when you look away from something. Mm -hmm. I think it can to sort of step back, realize it's a process, it's a journey. This is, this is what you have, right? This is what's going on. And um, you're kind of smack in the middle of healing from it, right? You're in this place where you're seeing and you're understanding and you're working mm -hmm. to open it, you know, um, and then what? Right. So it's like the third is the next step of how, how to get, how to get out of this and into out of survival mode. Yes. Yes. And, and, and did you mention perfectionism earlier? Yes, I did. Okay. I thought so. That's one thing I, I will ask you is anyone, you know, perfect. No. Okay. And like I said, it would, it, it's exhausting. I'm broke. I can tell you it's exhausting to even try. I have news for you. You're human. <laughs> You're not going to be perfect. <laughs> and and I, I, I think maybe that's what I need. Maybe, maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need to just tell myself it's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. It, this, it is, a lot of it is just telling yourself. It is that simple. Giving it's, myself permission <laughs> to be. <laughs> it's not simple, but, but, but it can be. The pieces can be simple. You know, you could take a lot of simple pieces and make a really complex thing change. Um, yeah. Right. And yes, telling you, realizing, real, it's, it's more than just realizing it. They're realizing, yeah, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm human. No human is perfect. Therefore, I am not perfect. <laughs> because, but at the same time, it's really telling yourself, and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. It is okay. It's safe. It's safe to be flawed. In fact, it's beautiful to have flaws. It's beautiful to have mistakes because we don't grow without them. Yeah, that's true. And and, 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 and I know all that in my head. In fact, one of my favorite things is a story about the broken pots with the gold mm -hmm. filling in them. You know, instead of throwing away, they, they make them even more beautiful, you know, a beautiful thing with them. 
And I, I try to picture that. And I, I don't know. I, I guess it's just, it's one step forward, two steps back. I, I, it's just, it's been such a journey Stop. I've been on for about a year now. I'm going to interrupt you just because that was a perfect time right there. Uh-huh. You said it's one step forward, two steps back to change that thought. Okay. Just catching forward. it. Staying still? Step back. <laughs> just two steps forward and then we'll see what happens. Okay. I, but I'm making, I'm making an effort. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. But you're not slipping backwards. It's the attitude of feeling like you're slipping backwards that's pulling you backwards. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So um, when we tell ourselves, I made all this effort, but it doesn't really matter because I fell right back down anyway. It's like the thing we end with is what we're remembering. And the negativity is like, it's, it's like heavy. Right, and it's pulling you under. It is. It's like a burden on just wrapped on your shoulder. So it's interrupting the pattern as it's happening. If you can, and if you can't, then you go back later and do it, and it's okay. It's okay. You're gonna. This is going to be full of an opportunity to be imperfect, because <laughs> <laughs> because it really is effort, and it's effort. It's really good effort, but it's effort to um, catch yourself. It's effort. Just that, just catching yourself as effort. And then it's effort to make a shift and make a change. And then what do I change it to? You know, it's difficult. It's learning to create new thoughts that are forward flowing and not self-limiting. So you do not want to self-limit yourself with your positivity. You know, you want it to be okay. completely open. And that's where letting go of perfectionism, it's helpful for that because Perfectionism is very closed, right? It's a very closed mindset of having yes, to be a Yes, it is. And so it's forcing you to be open just in that little piece. So you see how these things, they build up on each other. Like you don't have to attack the whole thing and one thing at a time. It kind of all starts to feed into each other. Okay. Thank you for watching. And I really appreciate Sarah for sharing her story. To see more like this, be sure to hit subscribe to this channel. For information on coaching with me or on group coaching or to be a guest survivor on this program, please see the links below. See you next time.